first game. You are right. Related facts. Same thing as related facts. They are. Related facts is the same as that family. You're exactly right. That we are going to talk about fact families or related facts today. Okay? The whole purpose of fact families or related facts is that when we are trying to figure out an addition or a subtraction problem, if we can't remember what it is, if we think about its family member, sometimes that helps us think of what the missing number is. So I want you to get out your top colorful pitch. And we're going to be up here in this top box. My story is, Erin has 11 books. I borrow four of them. How many books does Erin still have? So what is my number sentence? You are exactly right. So let's write 11 minus 4 equals, so we can try to figure that out. Now, subtraction to me is more difficult than addition. So instead of looking at 11 minus 4, which can be a little bit harder, what could I think, instead of this number sentence, what family member could I think of instead? Not minus, or plus blank equals <laughs> equals 11. Very good. Because remember, we have my 11, my 11, my 4, and my 4. So if I think of it this way, it's a little bit easier for me. So now I can think, if I'm at 4 and I need to get to 11, how many steps would it take me to get there? That is going to help me. You are right. It is seven. Okay, mathematicians. What should we do? <coughs> what should we do? Um, put the seven up here. Okay, we could put the seven up here. But how do I know it's right? You can check. You need to check yourselves, right? How can I check it? What can I do? You gotta count. You could count, okay. So we could check 11 minus 4 on the number chart, right? Or 4 plus 7 to see if it really does equal 11. You're exactly right. How else could I check it? You could use related facts and fact values. Okay. We could use our related facts, very good, like we just did, and we can swap them to make sure that that's true. How else could we do that? Sir? Um, we can, um... What is it giving us space to do? Write the cube to a circle. Okay, we could use cubes or we could use counters. So, if I use cubes or counters in my top box, what am I going to do first? Draw 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Draw 11. Then what am I going to do? What am I going to do? How should I draw my 11? Okay, I'm going to circle and take away 4. You are right. Then check yourself. Do you end up with seven? 
In first grade, I don't care if you did cubes, that's fine with me. Did it say to use cubes or counters? No. no, so you can use either one, it doesn't matter. You could have used a 10 frame to solve it. I don't care. It doesn't say, it just says draw and write to solve. Okay, so don't erase if you did cubes. That's fine. What does 11 minus 4 equal first grade? Seven. Did you check it? Yes. Awesome. Let's go down here. How are we going to check this number sentence? What are we going to do? Draw circles or cubes. You're right. Um, what am I going to draw? A 10 frame. Or you can do a 10 frame. Yeah, but how many am I going to draw? Four. So he says he wants to do a 10 frame. So I'm going to draw four. Now what am I going to do? Add seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just by looking at my 10 frame, automatically, what number do I see? What number do I see? Um. How many is in here? Well. No. How many is in here? No, 10 plus one more is 11. Was that my answer? Yes. yes. Very good. That's what we are doing today. We are checking ourselves because good mathematicians check ourselves. Okay. So it says, why can you use an addition to check subtraction? Why can we use our addition statistics to check subtraction? Because then it makes it easier. Yeah. Then you can, you, when you do your addition, it's, you just switch the two numbers <coughs> around. Like, mm -hmm. if there's, like, 13 on the bottom and on the subtraction, there's going to be 13 on the top. Mm -hmm. and Are you listening? And you found your answer? Can you find an answer by doing addition? Sure, you can. You're exactly right. Okay, so if I'm subtracting, I'm taking away part of it, and I'm trying to find the two parts. To me, that's a little bit more confusing than adding, because whenever I'm adding, I'm putting those two parts together to find the whole thing. Okay, so what we're going to do today is you are going to say 15 minus 7 equals, and you're going to have to figure out what 15 minus 7 equals. They already showed us, so first grade, what is 15 minus 7 equal? Very good. So go ahead and write in your 8. <coughs> so then, first grade, you are going to take your 8 and put it where? Up on the top. So put your 8 up here. All we have to do is move it up there, right? So now... Sir, I'm not going to ask you again to pay attention. Put your pencil down. Now we have to figure out if 8 plus 7 really does equal 15 or what it does equal. 
If I get something other than 15, is 8 going to be my answer? No. No, it's not. Okay. So raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you know what 8 plus 7 really does equal. What is it equal for straight? 15. You are exactly right. 8 plus 5 does equal 15. Now, mathematicians, we have to check ourselves. This number has to be the same as that number, is it? Yes! It is. So did we do it correctly? Yes! So that's what we're doing today. We are doing subtraction and addition problems to check ourselves. Does anyone have any questions?